Hi, Steve with Brownells here, and today we're going to look at some of my favorite cartridges, 32 caliber for handguns. So, let's take a look and see what we got here. Here's the 32 ACP. Everybody's familiar with that. That came out around the turn of the 20th century. As a matter of fact, John Browning's 1900 model pistol was very, very popular. That combined some pretty good firepower in its day in a very small package. Then the military powers got very interested in 30 caliber and the 30 Luger was a thing. In fact, the Swiss Army picked that up. Later on in automatic pistols, we had the 30 broom handle and the 30 toker F. This toker F will have to represent both of those. And that's a bottleneck steaming along at between 12 and 1400 feet a second. Pretty formidable round really when you consider the penetration value it has. So 32s can be really zippy. Now what I'm really interested in is 32 revolver cartridges. And here is the time-honored 32 Smith & Wesson Long. And that was looked at as an improvement on the standard 32 Smith & Wesson Short. This was available in either a round nose or with a flat nose, and the flat nose was called the 32 New Police. That was considered adequate firepower for law enforcement back early 20th century. It's lumbering along at about 700 to 800 feet a second, so it's not a, not a barn burner by any means. Not nearly as much as a Toker F or a 30 Mauser, 30 Luger, but uh, it was considered perfectly adequate. Next up, 32 Magnum. Beautiful cartridge. Well designed, very well balanced. It is a straight wall case with really robust brass. I use Starline brass and it seems to last forever. Um, if you have a 32 Magnum, you can shoot 32 long or 32 short in it, and you're good to go. You could even shoot 32 ACP in it if you wanted to, but I don't really recommend it. It doesn't headspace all that close, so I'd stay away from it unless I just absolutely had to shoot it. So the 32 Mag, great cartridge, readily available easy to reload. Next up is the new cartridge, the new kit on the block, 327 Federal. This is a really, really zippy cartridge. It is faster than any of them. And the beauty is if you have a 327 Federal, you can shoot 32 mag, you can shoot 32 long, and you can shoot 32 short in it. So you very versatile gun. Ruger makes a couple different versions of this, single action and double action. Taurus makes a gun for it, Charter Arms, um, Freedom Arms makes one for it also. Plus any number of custom makers can chamber up a revolver for you in 327 Federal. And don't forget, Henry's got a lever action in that caliber, so you can have a companion piece, um, a handgun, long gun combo. Very zippy cartridge, and the only thing I can really compare it to is the last entry, 3220, or 32 Winchester Centerfire. Now this came out in 1882, I believe. Uh, it was black powder, uh, 32 20, 32 caliber, 20 grains of black powder. Although a lot of folks say they have trouble stuffing 20 grains of black powder in that little case, and I believe it. But that is a zippy little round. Very good performance, and at one time there were two loadings for it. There was a handgun loading and a rifle loading, and the rifle loading was considerably more powerful. They finally did away with that. The, uh, they call it the 32 HV, the high velocity. And the reason because, was because uh, a lot of people were sticking them into handguns, which even if you have a good quality handgun, like a Colt Single Action Army, or one of the later hand ejectors from Smith & Wesson, it's hard on the gun. But if you had one of the Spanish copies, look out. Those things were not heat treated well, uh, not that uh, robust, so this could literally blow apart a cheap copy of a Smith & Wesson. So there you have it. Oh, almost forgot. This is the 32 North American Arms. This came out in conjunction with their pistol, the Guardian, and that was designed for self-defense and self-defense only, basically. It gives more energy at the muzzle than the 380 in most loadings. And that was the whole reason for developing that cartridge. 
Um, it hasn't proved super popular yet, um, but this Hornady load here with an 80 grain bullet, it gives you a thousand feet a second with that little XTP hollow point, which is nothing to sneeze at. That is a pretty formidable load. In fact, there's a great video out there by Lucky Gunner who discuss it. They discuss uh, why the best caliber for a snub nose is a 32, and he makes a really good case and has some really good video on there with penetration and uh, lots of facts and figures. Check that out if you get a chance. I, I was very entertained and enlightened by it. So that's a quick comparison of some of the better known 30 and 32 caliber cartridges. So if you happen to be looking for something with low recoil, but yet heavy firepower and a super flat trajectory, take a look at some of these 32s and 30s. You won't be disappointed. They're a lot of fun. They're easy to shoot. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.